Could you please be seated, ladies and gentlemen? Prime Minister, Mr Abbott, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, very good morning to you and a welcome to Government House. My name is Stephen Brady. I'm the Official Secretary to the Governor General. Um, I'm sorry about the delay this morning, but uh, quite a few people were on a uh, delayed flight out of Melbourne. Um, may I begin this occasion by providing you with a brief explanation of today's proceedings. Shortly, I'll invite you to stand as Their Excellencies, the Governor-General and Mr Bryce enter the room. Would you please remain standing and join us in singing the first verse of the National Anthem, which will be played by members of the Royal Military College Band Duntroon. I'll then invite you to take your seats, and the formalities will commence with my inviting the Governor-General to address us. At the conclusion of her remarks, the Governor-General will unveil the framed uh, Honorary Australian Citizenship Certificate of Mr. Raoul Vallenberg, uh, which is situated, as I said, to my left. It's proposed that following today's presentation, this certificate will be rotated between the Jewish Holocaust Museum and Research Centre in Melbourne and Sydney's Jewish Museum, and it will be appropriately displayed by them to visiting school children and the wider community. It will serve as a focus for educating and raising public awareness about Raoul Vallenberg and about his work and the special personal qualities that made him one of the most authentic heroes of the 20th century. Following the Governor-General's remarks, I'll invite the Prime Minister to speak. The Prime Minister's remarks will be followed by the performance of Ernest Bloch's The Prayer. Today, this will be performed by father and son duo, Uzi and uh, Anan uh, Bezor. Uzi is an internationally recognised Israeli cellist and the winner of several international prizes. In April 2007, Uzi received the Government of Israel's coveted prize for life achievement. His son, Anan, is an international concert pianist who was the head of the keyboard area at the Australian National University School of Music until the end of 2012. Following the playing of this beautiful piece, I'll call on the Leader of the Opposition to speak. Mr. Abbott's remarks will be followed by a short speech by Mr. Peter Wertheim, the Executive Director of the Executive Council of Australian Jewry. Mr. Wertheim's speech will be this morning's final address, and at the conclusion I'll invite uh, the Senior Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence from the Great Synagogue in Sydney to conclude the morning's formalities with a traditional morning uh, memorial prayer. At the conclusion of this prayer, I'll invite uh, this morning's speakers to come forward here and join the Governor-General for a series of official photographs. I will also ask the representatives of the Jewish Holocaust Museum and Research Centre and the Sydney Jewish Museum to come forward for inclusion in these photos. At that time, I'll ask our remaining guests to join Mr Bryce in the dining room for refreshments. The Governor-General will then join everybody at the conclusion of the official photographs. Finally, housekeeping, can you please, please make sure that your mobiles are switched off? Um, it's so important. So I'll just uh, wait and then I'll invite you to stand for the Governor General's arrival. Please stand for the arrival of Their Excellencies, the Governor General and Mr. Russ.
invite Her Excellency the Governor General to address us. Good morning, my friends. Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Peter Wertheim, Executive Council, Australian Jewry, Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence, Members of our Parliament, Your Excellencies, Holocaust survivors and those here today because of the courageous actions of Raoul Wallenberg, distinguished guests. Nobel laureate, writer and Holocaust survivor, Ellie Wiesel, has said, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. With these words, Professor Wiesel has reminded the world of its tragic failure to prevent one of the darkest periods in human history, the Holocaust. This was a time when the Nazi war machine, not geared to victory on the battlefield, but to the systematic annihilation of their fellow man, destroyed the innocent lives of countless millions of Jewish, Romani, disabled and homosexual people. But within this dark abyss of sadness and despair, there were flickers of light, acts of bravery and humanity by those who were not indifferent, acts of righteous and courageous people. No actions shone brighter or reflected better on the qualities of humanity than those of Raoul Wallenberg, a man whose courage in the face of adversity must be remembered for all time. Born in Sweden in 1912, Wallenberg was an architect, businessman and diplomat who served in Sweden's special envoy in Budapest, Hungary, from July 1944. Confronted with the reality of Hitler's final solution, he set about trying to save as many Jews as possible. Repeatedly putting his own life at risk, he succeeded in issuing protective passports and providing shelter for up to 100,000 people whose lives would otherwise have been lost. He rented buildings which he would label the Swedish Library or the Swedish Research Institute seeking to extend to them the protection of diplomatic immunity when these buildings were really just providing a safe haven for those whom he'd rescued. He would confront the Hungarian fascists, the Arrow Cross, as they were transporting men and women to the gas chambers, desperately handing out Swedish passports to all those he could find. And his intervention would help thwart Eichmann's plan to liquidate Hungary's general ghetto, which would itself have killed almost 70,000 Jews, just as the Nazi occupation of Budapest was coming to an end. These were the actions of one selfless man, who was to be tragically taken by the Red Army after they entered Budapest on the 17th of January 1945. He was never to be seen again. But since that time, much has been done around the world to ensure Wallenberg's memory is not forgotten. At Israel's Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial, he is honoured as righteous among nations, and the United States, Canada, Hungary and Israel have each made him an honorary citizen. In Australia, Wallenberg has already been honoured by parks and monuments created in his name. I am proud that today our nation goes one step further in making Raoul Wallenberg our first ever honorary citizen. I cannot think of a more appropriate and significant figure to welcome to our Australian family. Wallenberg's life is an example to all of us. His brave, selfless and compassionate actions are proof that just one person can make a real difference. Today may not have occurred, but for the efforts of people who understand how important it is to perpetuate Raoul Wallenberg's memory. None more so than Dr. Frank Barger, 
who with his mother, Maria, were rescued by Wallenberg. He has done so much to honour his name. And this morning, we thank him. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special day. A special day for the Swedish community who see us honour one of their own. A special day for survivors of the Holocaust and their families, some of whom are with us today. We say to you that Australia proudly welcomes its newest citizen and we assure you that the proposition never again beats firmly in our hearts and minds. It is said in the Old Testament that one who saves a life is considered to have saved a whole world. Today we honour the heroic deeds of one man who refused to be indifferent in the face of inhumanity and hatred. He ultimately would give his life so that others could have theirs. For this and for all that Raoul Wallenberg symbolises, we should all be eternally grateful. the Governor-General and Mr Michael Bryce, the Leader of the Opposition, the Attorney-General Mark Dreyfus who has worked so hard to bring us here today, the Parliamentary Secretary for the Arts Michael Danby, the members for Kuyong and Cook, distinguished members of the Diplomatic Corps, Your Excellencies the Ambassadors of Sweden, Hungary and Israel and the Acting High Commissioner for Canada. Mr. Peter Wertheim and leaders of Australia's Jewish community, the survivors and the living witnesses of history's greatest crime, you honour us with your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, in the depths of the northern winter of 1945, Raoul Wallenberg disappeared. We do not know his fate, but it is thought he died later that year. By this time, the war was over and the Jewish people saved by Wallenberg were counting the miracle of their survival and beginning to contemplate new lives in places of safety like Israel and Australia. Wallenberg never saw our lovely land in his 34 years on earth and yet today we join his name with that of our nation as its first honorary citizen. I believe this is entirely fitting as a tribute to this man of moral courage and heroic example, as a statement of the values Australians hold close to our hearts, as an expression of our deep gratitude for all that our nation gained when so many saved by Wallenberg came to these shores. Raoul Wallenberg would have been brilliant in any era he was physically brave. He possessed strategic brilliance and peerless, nerveless, negotiating skills. But what makes his name live on in this way is he employed those skills in the service of humanity. He acted as though there were no strangers. He lived as though every day might be his last. That's how Frank Varda comes to be here with us in Canberra today. As a nine-year-old in Budapest, Frank and his family had been reported to the authorities for not wearing the yellow star of David. A band of armed men came and seized them and dragged them to the military barracks where they were lined up in front of a machine gun. The soldiers were debating whether to shoot them on the spot or throw them into the Danube when some men in civilian clothing suddenly appeared. Raoul Wallenberg and his escort, who negotiated their safe release. The escort was a man named John Farkas, a resistance fighter 
who was Wallenberg's companion during those desperate, desperate days in Budapest. Mr Farkas came to Australia in 1949 and lived an unassuming life until his heroism was uncovered by the ABC Four Corners program in the early 1980s. In almost four decades, he had never spoken of his deeds until a journalist came to ask. Mr Farkas passed away in 1987, but his son George is here among us, proudly bearing witness. Frank, Barter and George Farkas have known of each other for years, but they have not met until today. This story of courage reaching across decades, generations and continents. So friends, we are here today to celebrate something exceptional in the human spirit, something that will keep teaching us lessons for as long as humans record their history, something for which we have profound gratitude because the deeds of one man secured for tens of thousands the most precious gift of all, the gift of human life. As the last witnesses to the horrors of World War II leave us, it is vital, it is imperative, to keep alive the memory and examples of individuals like Raoul Wallenberg. That is why there are memorials to Wallenberg all over the world, in Budapest, Tel Aviv, London, Argentina, the United States of America, memorials to him and his name. Perhaps the most poignant memorial of all is the one outside his birthplace in Sweden. It is a bronze cast of his briefcase, standing on the cobblestones as though he had just put it down momentarily. Its precious cargo of life-giving passports still inside, testament to the example of what one individual can do, even in the face of catastrophic evil. An embodiment of the Jewish proverb, reminding us that even when we are without choice, we can mobilise the spirit of courage. Friends, Raoul Wallenberg's fate may never be known for sure. He has no grave, but his legacy endures. It is measured in the example he sets for our own and future generations, but it is also measured in the tens of thousands of deaths he prevented through his actions. Some of the individuals whose lives he redeemed became part of our first great trans transforming wave of post-war immigration. Among the first to pledge themselves to their new home after Australian nationality was formalised in 1949. Now, seven decades later, <clears throat> Raoul Wallenberg will join them as an honorary Australian citizen. This will be the first time this honour has been bestowed by our country, and I cannot imagine a more deserving individual upon whom to bestow it. I conclude by expressing my gratitude to the Governor-General for this magnificent act of state to enshrine this most righteous of human beings in our national family forever. Thank you, thank you Prime Minister. The American composer Ernest Bloch represents in his musical tradition, traditional Jewish Bible chanting melodies, with a tradition that goes back hundreds of years. So to, today, we're delighted to invite Mr. Uzi Wiesel and his son, Mr. Arnon Wiesel, to perform one of these pieces entitled, The Prayer.
for that wonderfully reflective uh, piece. Um, may I now invite the Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Tony Abbott, to address us. Mm -hmm. Your Excellency, Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen. It would have been so easy to have looked the other way. Millions did. They concluded that there was nothing that could be done in the face of such evil, or that perhaps nothing much was really happening after all, or that some of the victims might have somehow had it coming. But others did what they could to help. Of all the examples of resistance to Nazi tyranny, Raoul Wallenberg's is perhaps the most fragrant. He remonstrated with death squads. <clears throat> he distributed thousands of Swedish passports to people awaiting deportation to death camps. He badged whole buildings as Swedish diplomatic institutions to help shelter the Jews within. In an era when executions were on an industrial scale, his was an industrial scale rescue effort, and it ultimately cost him his life. Raoul Wallenberg matters today, nearly 70 years after he disappeared into a Soviet camp, because, in part, of the contribution those he rescued from the Holocaust have made to Australia. Australia owes so much to Jewish people, especially to those who came as refugees from war-torn Europe, some of whom Wallenberg himself saved, such as Frank Varda, who is here today. Mostly, though, Wallenberg matters because of the importance of good example. Passivity in the face of evil can so easily become complicity. Wallenberg refused to accept that nothing could be done, that nothing could be done to help those who would be victims. That's why he now belongs to everyone, to Jews, to whom he was one righteous among nations, to Christians, for whom he might be seen as the ultimate Good Samaritan, to all people of goodwill who accept the golden rule to do to others as you would have them do to you, but often lack the courage to live by it. It's a privilege to support this act of citizenship. Raoul Wallenberg should be a citizen of every country which respects human dignity. He does not rest in our land. May he always rest in our hearts. Mr. Apple. One, uh, our final speech today will be delivered by a member of the Australian Jewish community. I'd now like to invite Mr. Peter Wertheim to come forward and speak. Your Excellencies, Ms. Quentin Bryce, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, and Mr. Michael Bryce, the Honourable Julia Gillard, MP, Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Tony Abbott, MP, Leader of the Opposition. Distinguished Ministers, Shadow Ministers and Members of Parliament. Your Excellencies, Ambassador Yuval Rotem of Israel, Ambassador Sven Olaf Peterson of Sweden, Ambassador Anna Siko of Hungary, Acting High Commissioner David McKinnon of Canada, learned rabbis and distinguished lay leaders of the Jewish community, survivors of the Holocaust and fellow descendants, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed fitting, as the Prime Minister observed, that the late Raoul Wallenberg has been recognised as an honorary Australian citizen, the first time Australia has bestowed such an honour. Raoul Wallenberg possessed a special kind of courage that enabled him to stand against the tide of events at the end of World War II and stare down the raw, racist savagery of the Hungarian Nilush movement, the Arrow Cross, and their uniquely evil Nazi masters. The late US Congressman Tom Lantosh, who was saved by Raoul Wallenberg, observed, and I quote, this heroic young diplomat 
left behind the comfort and safety of Stockholm to rescue his fellow human beings in the hell that was wartime Budapest. He had little in common with them. He was a Lutheran, they were Jewish. He was a Swede, they were Hungarians. And yet with inspired courage and creativity, he saved the lives of tens of thousands of men, women and children. I would go further and say that in confronting hatred and defying the apparatus of mass murder, Raoul Wallenberg set an example that is as relevant as ever to the contemporary world. If, as Edmund Burke observed, all that it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to say and do nothing, Raoul Wallenberg demonstrated that the reverse is also true. All that it takes to thwart evil is for one good person to stand up to it, to work against it, and to inspire others to join in doing so. By honouring the late Raoul Wallenberg with Australian citizenship, Australia is not only paying tribute to him, to what he achieved and what he stood for, but is also making a statement about who we are as a nation, a nation which treasures personal freedom, abhors tyranny, upholds justice, respects human dignity, stands up for the underdog, gives refuge to the persecuted and loves life. For Australians, these are not just words. As we are reminded each year on Anzac Day, which we commemorated only 11 days ago, these are values which Australians have fought to defend in many parts of the world whenever called upon to do so. The qualities of courage, compassion, and basic human decency which underpinned Raoul Wallenberg's actions are the very qualities by which we as Australians define our own national character at its best. On behalf of the Australian Jewish community, the Executive Council of Australian Jewry warmly commends the Prime Minister for her decision to recognise the extraordinary achievements of Raoul Wallenberg by the conferral of honorary Australian citizenship. We further express our gratitude to Her Excellency the Governor General for hosting the ceremony and to the Leader of the Opposition for attending and speaking at this event on behalf of the Coalition and providing today's proceedings with the imprimatur of bipartisanship. In that spirit, may I express the hope that every member of the Australian Parliament will join the Prime Minister and some 125 parliamentarians from more than 40 countries across the democratic world in signing on to the London Declaration on Combating Anti-Semitism as a gesture of solidarity with Raoul Wallenberg's heroic stand against the, this ancient and pernicious form of racism. Finally, may I thank all of those who have done so much over many years to perpetuate and honour the memory of the late Raoul Wallenberg, including Professor Frank Vider AM, George Farkas, Jan Arger Anger, Carl Buldig, Erwin Forrester and the Forrester family, and many people at the Sydney Jewish Museum, the Holocaust Centre in Melbourne, the Australian Association of Jewish Holocaust Survivors and Descendants, the Raoul Wallenberg Unit of B'nai B'rith, Australia and New Zealand, the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies, the Jewish Community Councils of Victoria and Western Australia, the ACT Jewish Community and the Australasian Union of Jewish Students. Today's proceedings powerfully affirm the work you have done and remind us how fortunate we are and how proud we all should be to call ourselves Australians. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this morning's speeches. But before we conclude this morning's formalities, I'd like to invite Senior Rabbi and Chief Minister of the Great Synagogue in Sydney, Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence, to conclude with a memorial prayer. Come 
מזכירים את חסדו ואת גבורתו ואת מיר במסירת נפשו. אנחנו מפילים בעל אשכרה נשמתו וגם אין תמנוחתו. לכן בעל הלחמים יסתירהו בצאת הכנפיו לעולמים יצרו בצהריים את נשמתו על נוי ונחלתו ונוח בשלום על משכבו ונאמר אמן. A God full of mercy dwells on high, grant proper rest on the wings of the divine presence, in the lofty levels of the holy and pure ones, who shine like the glow of the firmament, to the soul of Raoul, son of Raoul and Maria Wallenberg, a righteous person in the world, whose compassion, courage, self-sacrifice we remember today. May his resting peace be in the Garden of Eden. May the Master of Mercy shelter him in the shelter of his wings for eternity. May he blind his soul in the bond of life. The Lord is his heritage. May he rest in eternity in peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Um, as we bring this historic ceremony to a close, may I invite uh, this morning's speakers, the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, and Mr. Uh, Wertheim, to join the Governor-General in front here for a photograph uh, with the certificate. Thank you. Join the Governor General for refreshments in the dining room. Thank you.